I'm Mark Van Gessel, Extension Weed Specialist at the University of Delaware. And we've been looking into this concept of uh, chaff lining for wheat seeds that were still present at harvest. And so we developed our chaff lining chute for a John Deere 9500 uh, combine, which is a little bit older combine. It's, it's uh, not one of the new rotary type. So keep in mind that all combines are slightly different. And so the chutes need to be modified for your specific model of combine. If you have one of the new rotary, newer type models with a rotary combine, um, there will also be the need for a baffle that uh, helps with the airflow to separate out the, the chaff from the straw and that's uh, an extra step that's going to be need to be made up underneath the combine as it's uh, coming through off the the back of the sieves. We built a prototype uh, chute that we could concentrate that weed seed in about a one foot band behind the back of the combine. So we have a John Deere 9500 that we use for this um, and as the grain and chaff gets moved through the combine, the straw and the residue gets blown out here, but the chaff, that really fine matter, is coming out here. And that contains most, of that portion of it contains most of the weed seeds. So the idea is to, how can we capture that seed in a very narrow band directly behind the combine? So we're gonna go over the prototype that we built, our logic behind it, and just give you an idea of what we did. One of the things we had to do was account for everything that's coming out the back of the the combine off the straw walkers here that it gets it gets into that chute and gets put down on the ground so we had to um, make sure that we had no crevices open and any sort of open space either we covered it with sheet metal or some type of curtain that kept that weed seed moving in the path down the back of the combine and directly to the ground one of the things we have to account for on our model of combine is this last piece of chute that's coming through does move back and forth, it vibrates. So we have to allow for that vibration in, um, when we put it in. So we had to find spots along the back of the combine here that we could attach and support our chute. So we were fortunate with this model that it's got this uh, um, metal cross here with already prefabbed holes that we were able to take advantage of. But we were also going to need to fix it to this part of the combine as well. And that was one area where we did have to um, drill some holes and tap it uh, to hold the screws. The only other modification we had to make was a hole here where we could attach our um, chaff lining chute to the inside of the combine. The other approach when you're thinking about designing this is from the back end of the combine underneath this of when that once that chute is installed that you basically have blocked the sunlight and you can't see out. The other thing that we had to contend with on this model of the combine, there's this piece of metal here that goes up and over and it goes into where the straw gets distributed and we were losing weed seeds up there. So we had to fashion something that would prevent the flow of air up over this and into the straw and we'll show that piece in a minute. So this prototype was built here at the shop at the University of Delaware. Our chute consisted of five pieces of metal. Three of them formed the almost, you can think of it as the funnel in the back. And then they were bolted together along the seam. And then two pieces here that would fit up underneath here to contain the weed seed. So our sheet metal was bent, so it would form an edge that allowed us to attach it up underneath the, the combine. This is the main body of our chute, composed of three pieces of sheet metal, um, the back and the two sides open at the bottom. This has a U-shaped piece of metal that helps keep this distance here and keeps it rigid at the bottom.
I guess for lack of better words, I'll call these our two fins that go up underneath the, the combine and the, the shaker table um, to help keep the, the, the weed seeds and the chaff in. This had to be bent um, a couple of times to fit around the angle on the back of the combine, but it's uh, just a single sheet of sheet metal um, bent over to give us a, a lip that we could attach it to. And then at the bottom, it's actually an old hose, just something that's flexible that can go up inside that shaker pan and help keep that weed seeds um, um, enclosed in there without actually attaching to that shaker pan. Because remember, that's moving the whole time. So we need something that will be useful without being attached to the shaker pan. Some models of combines will have a chaff spreader on the back and that will have to be removed in order to position a chaff chute. The chaff lining chute hangs from underneath the combine, so there's a few places along the top of the chute lining apparatus that uh, has some bolts that holds it up. In our design, there's nine bolts on each side of the chaff chute liner that affixes up underneath the combine, and that supports it. We don't have any support structures down below at the bottom of the chaff line. So then we took the chaff liner, brought it up underneath the combine, and positioned it for the bolts that already made where the slots were for the bolts. Um, the bolts were, there was a half inch bolt with big fender washers the lip of the chaff liner went underneath the washers and up against the bottom of the combine. The fins or the arms of the chaff chute just rest up on the chaff walkers for now, but between the two people, we're putting the, the chaff line and tightening up the bolts. We may need individuals to get up inside the chaff to hold it with a wrench, uh, but uh, uh, tightened them up one by one and uh, made sure they were all snug. Then the arms or fins are bolted up in a similar fashion um, with the fender washers between the lip of the fins and the bottom of the combine. And that is what supports chaff chute liner to the combine itself. The last step is we had the flexible rubber hose that kept the chaff in on the, the shaker table and we have one more bolt and washer to tighten up against the wall of the combine. One of the things we realized after we had our chaff liner up was that there was a spot up underneath the hood there that uh, allowed air to flow up and over a uh, baffle and into the, the uh, straw chopper. So in order to get around that, we have this metal pipe um, and um, with a rubber hose attached to it that just f sets up underneath the, that, that hood and prevents the chaff from going into the straw walkers. One of the last steps is to use duct tape to seal up any cracks or crevices. So along the spot where the chaff liner attaches to the combine, we run duct tape along there just to help seal that up. It's not as for support, it's simply to keep the seeds contained in the chaff line. Um, so then we look around any place where we see holes, uh, we use duct tape to, to tape it up. Um, it made it easier also for someone to climb up into the, the, the chute at this point looking for light and tape up any of those little holes. One word of caution though is you can't put any duct tape up to the shaker tables. Again, that shaker table is moving and it needs to slide back and forth freely. So here's our final assembled chaff chute liner up underneath our John Deere 9500 combine. Um, we've got it ready to go. Um, ready to go to the field and test it all out. In the fall of 2019, we were capturing 87% of all the seeds that came out the combine were in that narrow row of chaff. 
Um, we're going to continue to work with this. We had promising um, observations and results and encouraging to move forward in 2020 in future research. Mm -hmm.